just got annoyed when people say beautiful. You don't need to introduce her because she's lovely. Well, I want to for that. I want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it, I'm going to read this. <laughs> Page five. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Ron Silliman. Hello. Uh, thank you so much. In a moment, I'm going to give way to Tyrone Williams, who is going to offer an introduction to Erica Hunt. I'm here to sort of frame things a little bit to tell you a couple of details about the event. First of all, we have two of Erica's books available for purchase. This new one, Veronica, a suite in X parts, which I'm looking at Erica. She would be willing to inscribe for you. Yes, the answer is yes. If you buy it, right? I bet most people in this room own this one, but we're still we still are offering it for sale. Letters to the Future: Black Women Radical Writing, edited by Erica Hunt and Don Lundy Martin, and it is also available. And although Erica will not sign for Don, she will sign for herself if you would like to purchase a copy. Um, we have a reception. I mean, I always say it's a yummy reception, but I bet just passed through it and dipped into it a little bit, and I would say that it is a yummy reception. Food and drink afterwards. This is, you know, the hallmark of the writer's house is the reading but the reading plus hanging out, talking, convening, conferring, asking questions. So please stay for the reception. Uh, one final thing, I just want to thank a couple of friends for really making this thing happen. It seems that we, a group of us, have fallen into an annual thing where we invite a person we deeply admire to come and talk with us. So one of these is William J. Billy Joe Harris, who's right there, who's been involved in this. And Alden Nielsen, and you know, Alden Nielsen is right here. And these, these people, it's not like they're in Philly. They've traveled to get here. And you're about to see uh, and hear from Tyrone Williams, but he's also one of these amazing friends. So thank you to the three of you uh, for, for doing this every year. It's just such a great idea. And thank you, Erica, for, for coming and spending the time with us today. What a day. So, and now here's Tyrone Williams with an introduction to Erica. So um, on Monday, Al told me, oh, by the way, you're introducing Erica. <laughs> so um, I said, okay. Um, but I'm actually happy to do that. One, because um, years ago, I invited Erica to uh, my university. And the only person who showed up for the reading other than me was my chair. Um, and this, you know, these sort of things happen, of course, at, yeah. at universities. So, this is my opportunity, I think, in some ways, to to make up to Erica for that. I've been reading Erica's work for many years. Uh, like many of you, Arcade, for it was the first, my first introduction to her work um, through um, other books and chat books, which I'll list in just a moment. Um, I've written a couple of. Es essays on Erica, which I won't read. You don't worry. Uh, <laughs> tonight, um, so um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce her. And even though I wrote up this uh, rather formal, somewhat academic thing, I've been told by my host not to read it. So I'll just read the. <laughs> I'll just. <laughs> I'll just read uh, the the. the, the the, no lectures, no lectures, right. So Erica Hunt is the author of Local History, Arcade, Peace, Logic, A Day in Its Approximate Time Sips Right Before Your Eyes, and other books and chat books, including the forthcoming, I, well, not forthcoming, is here tonight, Veronica, A Suite in X Parts from Nightboat. Um, Al just showed you the book she co-edited co with Don, Lundy Martin, an anthology of black women's radical writing, uh, Letters to the Future. And new to me, her, just this morning, her new and selected will be forthcoming 
too. And as she said earlier, this is her year, um, you know, so it's, let's celebrate it. Um, so we've been talking all day, really, about Erica's work, and she's been responding to some of our comments. So I'm going to read just a little sliver of this thing that I worked on for so long. Um, <laughs> And I'll just. <laughs> right, exactly. So, if critics have noted, Erica Hunt's writings exist outside the norms of traditional African American and feminist writing, with her insistent linguistic innovations recalling the work associated with, on the one hand, the language writers, and on the other, um, uh, BAM, or the Black Arts Movement, and beyond. And to this extent, her writings called into question the advent of what is today called, and called too easily, quote unquote, identity politics. <clears throat> in her article entitled Rock in a Hard Place, Erica Hunt and the Politics of African American Postmodernity, Kathy Luce Schultz writes that, quote, Hunt, whose lineage includes language poets, feminist writers, and politicized writers of color, produces works that draw upon these categories, the ones I just mentioned, while at the same time exploding the boundaries between them. And I think Schultz is correct in regarding um, that the under-theorized experimental work of Hunt has been, um, been neglected. Uh, but the only thing I would say about this, and this is where I go off script, so to speak, is that I think of her work as... Um, exploding both the boundaries of what we think of as mainstream African-American writing as well as experimental um, African-American writing, which is to say that it's a writing that forces us to rethink these categories that in many ways we have become too, um, too accustomed to. Boy, too accustomed to. That was a nice <laughs> sentence for an English teacher. Anyway, um, I, won't, I won't go any farther. I'll just say... It gives me great pleasure. I'm so happy to be here to once again hear Erica Hunt, and this time to a room full of people. <laughs> okay. Great. Good evening, friends. Many friends. Good evening. Um, I'm going to read around some things. Uh, I'll read a little bit from this little chapbook, Time Slips Right Before the, Your Eyes, and I'll read a lot of Veronica, and um, I'll just, you know, I'll browse through, through the catalog, right? <laughs> um, uh, so I thought I would start with, um, I do need water, uh, Mood Librarian. It's a nice spare uh, spare um, series of poems. I think of them as my attempt to, they're in couplets, they're numbered, and I think of them as my attempt to write a koan, a Zen koan, you know, those things that you, you write and then you're supposed to, you know, meditate on them. But they're kind of more funny, hopefully. I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> It's called Mood Librarian. <clears throat> One, there is nothing like you in the world, and I have lost my page looking up into your face. Two, the sun sprints across the year, and who has time for sleep? Four, I learn from the past of others' mistakes. Six, you'll always guess what's happening, counting the same way, wrong. Eight, undizzy me, captain of my ocean, level with a gaze. Nine, play your hand. So it's fun playing with line breaks, you know, like play your hand. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, 
13. Catch the ball, and now I throw it. 16. Birds purpose the air as you purpose pen and paper. Twenty one. My house and there's nobody in it. Hey, hey. My house and there's nobody in it. Hey, hey. Especially when your house is clean. It's great. It's a great thing. Great thing. Okay. Twenty three. <laughs> Stay with the shakiness until the next thing comes. Twenty five. We don't vote our dreams. They come after us. 26, after ecstasy, laundry. <laughs> 28, things changing into what they are. 29, nothing so manages me like my own fears. 35, words, I'm moving obviously, words cutting both ways, not just for comparison. 37, make a date with a box, who it looks good with. 41, exactly my size, the version in the mirror appears closer. 45, give yourself an out where fates summon you. 49, the body spends itself, exhausted material, an idea. 52, wake the stone, call back the atoms. 55, broken glass subsumed into the bottle. 57, life, a dash between dates. 59, before sickness, tea. After sickness, tea. Okay. Um, so there's my attempt to be a Buddhist, whatever. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm going to read a little bit. I think I'm going to start with, um, oh, you know what? in the spirit of the library again. <laughs> Woman with wings. The way out of the library isn't always clear. Victory, or so she calls herself, drives with me. We move along, closing the zipper across the landscape, joining two sides of an emotion together. Up ahead at the fork, causality breaks into a side effect. We interrupt the librarian's silent monologue. It drains her face of animation, sucks the air from the room. Her figure bars the exit like a bad habit. It is possible to train these associations whether you like them or not. With practice, you can predict defeat or summon the sun rise over the scene murderously. But work is pushing past resistance, past the sense as if it has all been written before spilling off the library shelves. Sometimes you can read with the headlights on, and sometimes you can drive to moods for which no correlates exist, only curves, shaded paths in the wildness, wilderness, occasional plots of land ignored by absentee owners. The cars ahead of us have disappeared. Finally, the way is clear, and we have come to a way out past the flocked walls, the manipulated seams, past that unzippered feeling, the tacit violence between its teeth, that trick with the mirrors and speed. So I'm going to read a little bit from Veronica. Context is all. This me, 
not that me, that them, no, the other them, that we, or this we, all of we, both of them and all of we, when they're not here, but here in that sense, me then, before then, before we, when we, how we, that we, for we, when we spoke, then. Someone matching your description. You wake me up, Veronica, to escort you to the door of the unknown, and I am slapped awake and paperless, my eyeglasses abandoned on the ledge, startled, a tongue triggered dry, staring into eyes emptied of the exact shape of mercy. You, Veronica, are beside yourself, your face a burned down house. Count me in so I can walk with you, Veronica, though you are mostly alone, even dry-eyed, at your own funeral. Who could shake longing to take the place of a child about to be buried? Being of two minds is not enough. When Jacob wrestled with an angel, I wonder who is wrestling with me or you to argue reasonable doubt. When I know, you know, they never leave their guns. They carry them into churches, bars, courtrooms. They put scare quotes around the world. You see, they are never mistaken. There are no words for mistake, no words, no reason for indefinite register. There are no words for mistake, no obvious threads that binds the master to the missing supply of mastery. Even sleeping histories, abolished fictions live absent the bigot whose afterthought is our undermine. Just one knowing what is known from before and knowing what the owners of copious knowing know without speaking, say without saying exactly. Be my scapegoat, my sex toy, my replenished cargo, my bowl of candy, my profit center of terror, my profit center of terror, my margin of error, my inevitable extinction, my chronic condition for which there is no escape, my death. Ghost names. Veronica, whose ghost name is Vita, wept to be a grandmother at 35, for don't stones desire to be touched. Veronica, whose ghost name was Yvette, who other girls lay and wait to fight every day, bitten by one fierce girl, while other girls laugh so out of body, they never noticed the, the bites scarring their own bituminous skin. Veronica, whose ghost name was Evelyn, was murdered by her husband, for even a rock wants to dance and not be hurled and broken, orphaning children and children's children. Veronica, whose name was Henrietta, brought from Antigua at 16 to warm a stone of a man almost three times her age, outlived him and her seven children. Veronica, whose ghost name is Martha, whose rage at martyrdom turned her arms into resting missiles, all knew never to cross. V sticks out like a battered peace sign over an impatient heart that cannot bear the beating or another catastrophe. Hit in the forehead, shoved, always out of nowhere, pulled in. The reins of female obedience are killing us. Sorry, this is a, this is a lamentation. This whole book is a, is a lamentation. So, but I'll, I'll get to a, a better part. But bear with me. You have to come, come, in, come with me into the valley. Yeah. Yeah. Veronica, how we got here, we don't know. Veronica with her weird dandelion, I'm going to say locks. Me fresh from the whirlwind, the bullseye, the twirling pinwheel, one hand over my heart. But the matter facted this in cement. We were in narrow straits. How straightened? How narrow? Doorknob be my heart, heart be my door. We were out of key, out of commotion. The eviction notice said as much. We were out of sweet talk. No words for the straits we were in. Chilly hands picked my pocket. No cool, no sang froid to blanket froth. Nothing but the truth burned to the ground. 
We were in narrow straits. How narrow, how straightened. Could it have been his tone of voice? The question itself is illegal. Hard on the sleeve? Everybody knows that's bad for business. No business dreaming. That's a quote. You know, you're not supposed to sleep during the day. It will make you ineligible for the Wheel of Fortune guest pass and citizen zombie benefits. Bad intentions? Intentions can stroke or bruise while supplies last. Shit happens, or so they say, mostly to the uninsured mothers of gunshot teenagers. We were in narrow straits, Veronica, suddenly surrounded one by the dozen people. We were turning around to face the wind. We were out of fine points. When you're a hammer, everything's a nail. We were out of patience. No one could miss the obvious coming. We'd always paid attention. What price? What loss? But randomly assigned names. For instance, someone mistook Veronica for me, as if our names were interchangeably, syllabically, for black, female, fat, thin, poetic, shy, angry, unpredictably angry, closets filled with mysterious anger, <laughs> coming from nowhere to erupt anywhere. Car or park or Kmart, mall or campus, lounge, bedroom, backyard, bathroom, grandma's house, doctor's office, emergency room, prison. One size fits all in the brackish melon, hibiscus chlorine scented calm of public space, a bright red fuse waiting for reliably unreliable weather. Veronica and I are unreliable weather with mismatched closets of rage potentially the mothers of gunshot teenagers, prone to brine and fixed turbulence despite the sieving motion in history, the retrieval of balance between reason and perspective does not apply to us. Instead, we teeter on the brink of boiling vertigo. Nerves strain thin in narrowed straits. How straight, how narrow? The man with the largest gun boasted he was still standing. The trial went on for years. You could lose his face in a crowd. We forgot our hands over our hearts did not grow there. Almost forgot how we got here. The man with the largest gun keeps talking, issuing statements through his lawyer. His trial could go on for years with our hands over our mouths. We were out of excuses. Day after day, the bodies pile up. Must be friends with the wrong police. <laughs> how did we get here? We used to know. Spark, can you speak in rain? Question, do gravestones mark free? Rage, can you escape cage death while chained to necessity? We were in narrowed straits, how straightened, how narrow. We were out of science, theirs suited closed eyes. No luck with sixes, sevens, or even elevens. Veronica claimed my pockets spawned zeros, and we were ready to turn on each other the fire hose of free floating ire. But for this, we exchanged our hands over our hearts, hers for mine and mine for hers. Thank you. So this is all written in a, as I said, it's a lamentation. So it's all got a kind of um, just grief or something. I'm trying to see if language can mediate that. Where there are no words, can there be words? Um, Here a thousand birds dispute. The gun going off, the random backfire, who handled who, and who rose to be recognized, and how the body came to be fresh, fallen there, and why the girl was tackled, and how her wrist looked slight in handcuffs, and the exact nature of the orange pin, and the load glassing her eyes, the load incalculable, and the incalculable load. Here a thousand birds dispute, the fresh blood on the sidewalk, the battle line, how it was drawn, how the sides were chosen. Had there been a trial? or any doubt, and if so, how it was framed. Did the shot hang in the air, and who was there to hear it? And here, hold this thought, four people are shot each day. As Xenon follows its element, or night its daytime shadow, as penumbra fades into solids, 
and endures a rain of blows. There falls a rain of blows. Here, a thousand birds dispute. What went wrong? The stopped clock, the orange pin, the random call, the fall from childhood, the incalculable fall, the fall incalculable. The time, this time, not to let the familiar obsequies mask obscenity, twist our lips. The birds dispute these two. Televised worship of cinders is riveting. Junk heartaches abetted by hollow gestures. The birds' disputations grow louder, frantic against glass, stunned, splintered, and hushed. The gun going off, the random backfire, appears as random as asking, who's got the gun? Who owns this gun? Who sold the gun? Who pulls the gun? And who does the gun let sleep? I guess I'll read this. I read this this afternoon. It's a little hard. This, this is upon another acquittal. A choreography of grief for Mamie Till, Sabrina Fulton, Samira Rice, and Geneva Reed Veal. She had needed to forget, but she had promised. Her blues angled, slipped out, capsizing, traveling a long distance as if underwater, the sun casts a blurry silence. And looking, refused border, it still filled her mouth with scorch. And when I saw her fall into herself, not her first grief, and crumple <coughs> in an instant, knowing no justice will ever be found, could be found, where nothing is said out loud. And when it is said or wailed, the something said is something that no one hears. Everything will be taken from you. Even more than you know will be taken away and it will sever you, make you swerve, stagger, as if punched in the heart or in a part you can't easily name, talked over, punched into, so you pivot as if possible to get out of the way. I write as if words will suspend your fall when there is no Departing agony. Uh, broken English. <coughs> Wound up in words is wounded, re wounded, rewound. Rewinding, repeating, re receding, re re inscribing, re re inflicting, re re inserting, re beating and re-suffocating. The b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b b breathing, grieving, bulleted body on repeat, wood, wound, wound, wa, wa, wa. reading into ache. Steady, stead, e, or not, re, 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 ready, red, 
already or not. B red, red, b b b broken syllable, 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 syllables. Uh, d tatch meant <coughs> it's not b b b b b b better b b better. Remember red. Remembered. It renders speechless. <sighs> Tenderness. Something else to be afraid of. S strip skin. Dling kindred like kindling into broke can states render render rendering illegible and unintelligible we're we're black 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 blackness suppressed by laws severed tongue to cower us and sc 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 scowl us dead. Mute. Yet she, I, to speak all at once, the thing that has been on her, my mind, which words, verbs, recover dignity, restores let letters to the unmuffled, unmuzzled, full, throated sound as in some bodied. The dead lines teach the proper order of time, scorched zones of property, propriety's intention, returns me her days after day to variations of the question. How to breathe freely, despite shackle rattle and pummeled jolts. Where does glare recede? Who, when do words lead to care? Beyond sight and out of sight, a path to better resist. What paradise, a poem in an alternative reality. We tent ourselves in bittersweet the move, the more to eyebrow you, dear, for we know we are cherished for a positive outlook with a hint of candor, and if the correct tests are met and the results hidden, let them entrap me with fastidious curtain calls, expect me to spectacle wrapped in the film, film version in which they have given themselves high marks, their gems in their pockets, happy, Snapshots capture moments in security and retail. Telegraph the semi-public engines driving desire away from prosperity, an unreachable outpost. But let me tell you, the rubber meets the scree and slides us back into the lobby, a labyrinth of dumbo-weighted regrets. Inadmissible in most courts, it's not long before it occurs to us that no angel plays a harp that way. Maybe we're too close to the mic, like we are way, way over our heads. Um. Oh yeah, a little more context is all. This me, not that me, that them, no, the other them, that we, or this we, all we, both of them, and all of we, when they're not here, but me then, before then, and before we, when we, how we, when we spoke then, never spoke back to them then. Silent we, resilient we, existed as an existential us, observing with restraint and bemusement, uh, terror, a noisy them, childish them, and if we overspoke, we spoke using our bodies to them, head tilted, or hand back at them, or facing them with all our backs, never breaking faith so masked to all senses of them, all tenses of we, overprepared. Mm. From a handbook of quarrels, how 
what they say about you makes it say itself through you. Thought bubbles overhead, close captions, your voice inserted like a chip in the back of your head. The king is dead, and long live Elvis impersonators. They're the only ones who receive royalties anyway now, quoting the original tenants and leaving empty suits to writhe on the stage, booty bump and drop to feed hungry beats ripping harmless in a televised cage. There is no danger here anymore. They got all the signifiers they need. N is a household word. (laughs) <laughs> domesticated by suicide ideation officers who look just like you. Together, today they are out looking for the color struck and the color stuck, hue by hue, dead or alive, color drained and poured back into, quote, speech enacts domination, becoming the vehicle through which social structure is reinstated, close quote. Speech constitutes its address at the moment of its utterance. The words puncture the skin in friendly fire and its mishearing deafens. Is the speaker the puppet or the puppeteer? Sleight of hand, an ancient forgery conducted in language so under the skin, we think we are speaking our own thoughts. (laughs) At the end of the line, is that a noose or a question mark? This is where love comes in. (laughs) You are the second, this is for my mother, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where you are the second light that can never say never. You are the fourth star, the sun is all over you. You are cartwheel, come down to earth please. You are breeze and beach, the sand and sandwich. Water in your ears, you cup the sound of the ocean. You are skip and hop, hoping shape beyond scrape. Even twirling, you stop yourself before falling backwards into the mirror, the land that lies behind you. Who can say where it begins or ends? You were the beginning of her. Who is she? The figure to be remembered. Who is she? You are the shadow from the ground up. You are there, reading and waiting for you are there waiting to be capsized into her, to pour one pronoun into another, into the urgent world, the waiting world of shoe polishing and hair straightening and tongue lashing, the urgent world. You need a compass to be sure it's you with her inside you and her outside, outside of you. The urgent world with its pushing and shoving and disputations, its claims of disinterest, its insistence on continuity. You replacing I and she replacing me proves two lines do meet. First as parallel lines, then as rings, an expanding drop. That's for Daphne, Daphne Lindsay. More, another place where love comes in. There's so much to do for justice, and we're running out of brink. So I grab my socks, and I pull them up. I slip the latch on my one-track mind, and I avoid the chair that catches me with a nap. I point my feet in the left direction, prove I am all ears, and I work with the pivot, the hip, the city, its dance map. I avoid the cemetery of stubborn spots. Uh, Avid walks with a slow crawl, avoid rock walks with a slow crawl and notice the furnished detours along the way. Each step one takes in public jars the partially apprehended panorama of the cookie cutter's regrets. Is an occasion to learn from the field of the interior. Here, the street, the home, catalog, collected histories of first aid and relief, post no bills on dread, seek out uncollectibles, be suspicious of fancier goods lost than found. Bravery starts from the bottom of love. Notes from warriors returning home with souvenirs. In a simple assault of questions too numerous to canal, the sky's not the limit. It turns out the breeze 
a whisper of eighth notes detached from the staff, our birds wing by, that as birds wing by, named and numbered in regimented flight. No words without commitment to the act of answering or defaulting to an I don't know. This is where love comes in. Coat on, coat off. Hat on, hat off. Go back for the gloves. Go back for your umbrella. Go back for the scarf. Go back for the plastic orange sunglasses. Go back for the rain boots with the frog face on the toes. They like them. The boots remind them to look for all the world's details. Undetectable plunge beneath scrutiny. Their small hands fit perfectly into mine. Let few events escape, marking a turned page like a bookmark, as if dropped on the path days ago. It shows up later in melting snow. Thank you. Erica Hunt. Thank you, Erica Hunt. Wow. Um, well, we heard a lot of poems from this book, and we have some copies for sale. So if you want to buy one, we hope you will. Um, and we hope you'll hang around and have a reception with us and have drink and yummy food and get a chance to talk to Erica. Um, I want to thank again my three friends for traveling and especially Erica Hunt for spending the whole day with us. Let's thank her one more time. And thank you for coming to the Writer's House. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>